Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 20 in our Crusader Kings 3 series. If you joined us for the live stream yesterday, you know that things started out really well, and uh, we've been growing, it's been fantastic, but now suddenly we find ourselves in a very difficult situation because while simultaneously fighting a war uh, for what remains of Wales, uh, we also were invaded by the Duke of York and his allies and defeated uh, so we're in a very difficult situation. My heir and two of my other children are currently being held captive by them. Uh, and it's going to be a difficult situation to find my way out of. I can't even purchase enough uh, mercenaries to be able to make up the difference. So we're going to have to see what we can do. We need to get some of our allied armies to join us. Uh, but we're going to try to find our way out of this mess as easily as we can. Well, here's good, uh, good news. My circumspect son and heir, Edward, has been released from his imprisonment at the hands of uh, the Earl and is once again free. So that's some good news. The bad news is we are still in a very difficult situation. Uh, King Edward uh, of Ireland... Wait. Did my wife die? What happened? My wife is now Petty Queen of Mercia, which means she's no longer King of I er, the Queen of Ireland. What is going on here? So my son is now the heir. He's now the King of Ireland. I don't know what happened. Why that got passed to him. Uh, it does not appear to tell me why. But hey, I'm not going to complain about it too much. The main thing now is that I'm kind of in my own way. Uh, I need to no longer be in control so I can take over as my son. But, all right. So that's what's going on. Okay. This makes more sense, but I don't know why this is coming like this in this order. But it looks like my wife has passed away in childbirth. Uh, so I'm stressed. My daughter was stillborn pretty common thing unfortunately that happened back in the day um henry the eighth's mother for example notoriously died after childbirth of something called childbed fever his wife uh, who eventually gave him a son um jane seymour also died of childbed fever uh after giving birth so th that was unfortunately something that happened a lot at the time and still happens today occasionally um all right, we need to find a marriage for myself that's going to give me a decent alliance. But also is going to be close by. I'm not going to marry some five-year-old or something. Who can we marry? Boy, there's a long list of people that just don't offer me much. I'm going to hold off for now until I can find a decent match. We've now got a pretty substantial force marching with us. One with which I think we can win some battles. And we caught up to a small part of his army, which actually is exactly the way that we want this to go. We're going to win back some of the lands that he took. And then we're going to go deal with this army. Okay, here he comes. He's going to force a decisive battle. Unfortunately, he got there before my reinforcements could get here. And we're going to lose because of it. We ended up fighting a piecemeal battle rather than the one that I wanted to fight. So once again, we're in the same situation we were before. Let's take a look at it's 81% down now. Oh, what's he trying to take? The Duchy of York? Because I don't own the Duchy of York anyway. He might just be trying to take territory that belongs to the Duchy of York. I can see now we're down to just 9,000 men. We very, very well are going to lose this war. I don't know if I can... He's not going to do a white piece. I could surrender. Earl Christopher would become his vassal. I'll probably need to just go ahead and do that. We're going to lose some territory. You can see there. Uh, but honestly, it's a small price to pay at the moment. Especially since we're going to inherit Ireland anyway. So there's something interesting that I wanted to look at for a minute. And that is the ruling house in Alba, or Scotland. Uh, they're Russian. And look at her heir. Her heir is Dabrinya Gurilov, 
who is Orthodox Russian by religion. Um, and he's right here. <laughs> so uh, that's really fascinating how that has all gone down. That we're actually going to see Russians on the throne of Scotland. Uh, of course, we're going to have to take them on at some point because we're trying to re uh, unite all of Britain and Ireland into one uh, empire of Britannia. Okay, uh, I'm willing to release Elizabeth Greenhill from my care, but freedom does not come free. All right, cool. We can ransom John, my prisoner. Only 10 gold, but we'll go ahead and do that. We're staying pretty quiet for the time being. We got our military started to build build back up. I'm actually working on, uh, as the head of Anglo-Saxon culture, uh, working on Castle Bailey's, uh, which is going to take about 23 more years to develop. Uh, my mother Constance died from her wounds. Which wounds did she have? Well, she was 63 years old, so rest in peace, mother. It is now 1223 AD, the fall of 1223. I still am not married. Uh, I am 42. Honestly, what I'd like to find would be somebody who is an unmarried young ruler of some realm with whom I could have a child that would not necessarily inherit anything beyond that realm, but would put that realm into uh, our dynasty, which would be kind of a big deal. Uh, so I've got to look for somebody who fits all of that. Who's this here? Yeah, she's unlanded. So we need somebody who uh, is a young woman who is in control of their own territory, but has no children of their own. So like this princess of Wales, isn't she a relative of mine though? I could marry her if I live long enough. And that would pass Wales on to another one of my children. Um, yeah, let's, uh, choose myself and choose her. It's a little weird. Oh, she will not accept. Why will she not accept? Uh, oh, it's a patrilineal marriage because we're related. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> okay, I get it. All right, we're going to do this. I, uh, finally am able to declare war on the King of England for my own personal claim on that title. So here we go. Now the numbers are pretty even to start depending on allies and things of that nature. So we're gonna raise our army. I wanna see real quick uh, what we have available as far as mercenaries go. Because obviously there are gonna be some that are available to us, but nothing necessarily all that great. These are bowmen and crossbowmen. Here's some armored footmen and bowmen. Let's go there. So we're going to hire them. We're also definitely going to want to call our allies to this war. We want everybody we can get. Oh, he can't be called because he's that's a liege of his. We can call the Earl of Moray. I can call King Edward to war. I can call Earl Christopher. No, I can't because he's a, a vassal as well. All right, so this is about to get absolutely crazy. We're going for the throne of England. And you can see right now we've got twice the manpower that he does. Obviously, that may change at some point. But for now, that's where we are. How many men does that give us with, with my son's Irish army joining? We're up to 13,000. I don't know what allies he has that he can call. But he hasn't called any so far. We're going we're gonna to march on London. So in order to deal with my alcohol, I've become... Er, to deal with my stress, I've become a drunkard. Which now means um, I've got too many holdings as far as my domain goes. I, now I really need a wife that I can get to help kind of manage that stuff. Uh, I guess being a drunkard kind of messed me up for all of that. But uh, we're going to deal with 
the situation at hand first. And right now I've got a major problem financially uh, that we're going to have to deal with. So I'm going to try to figure out how to how we can demand payments from a couple people. That'll help. We're using hooks to demand those payments. That gives us another 100 gold, so that'll help a little bit. But I'm going to look around for a wife. I wonder if there's... We can't look based on gold. I guess the women don't have gold anyway. Um, alliance power, maybe. Actually, what I really want is somebody who's going to help me manage all this stuff. Oh, she's Saxon. I don't really need somebody to have children. Okay, so there we go. We're going to have her manage my domain. That's going to give me some pluses to stewardship. And that also puts me back up to where I could actually have six holdings if I wanted to. So that solves that problem. How are we doing on this siege? It doesn't appear to be progressing at all. Okay, there we go. Now we've got the Siege of London going. I went and dealt with the army that was sitting here and fought him. Oh, we got another claim we could press. So we'll see what happens when we take London, if that actually ends it. If we actually capture him, then that'll solve the problem. We did not. Warwickshire's under siege, so we finally know where the enemy army is. I was wondering where he had an army. So there it is. We'll go defeat him in the field. Where's the Irish army? They're coming. Okay. They just might take a little while to get there. Now right, he's running because he saw me on the way. We'll catch up to him because my army moves pretty fast. The Irish army's right behind me, so they'll get there soon enough. Our knight was slain by Roderick. That's okay. <laughs> Doesn't change the end result. Will this be enough to win the war and take the throne? That's the question. I'm in a negative financial situation now, but we're very close to winning the war. Uh, so we lost 739 killed. We killed twice that many. Got 156 kills for our knights. Nice. All right, but we've got to quickly end this war. Or we're going to have a problem. Oh, ask our head of faith for gold. Excellent. 444 gold coming from the Pope. Uh, we also have... Who is this? He's the king's grandson. We're going to hang on to him. We also have the queen, but not the king. Do I have to go retake London? Because I thought I took London already. Or maybe we just need to defeat the army in the field again. I think that's probably the better option. Because the king's probably leading this army. Because he wasn't in London. Petty Queen Emma gained the trait pregnant, so my 40-year-old my wife is pregnant. She's about to be Queen of England. As soon as we catch up to this other army. Which we're about to do. Yep, he is commanding this army. Killed Earl William. That's it. You are now a mighty king. Disband the army. I'm King of England. Woohoo, boy. King Edward Wolfmayer, son of England. 44 years old. Now, what does this do to my realms? Okay. England and Mercia would go to my son, who's King of Ireland. Uh, that would unite those. Ireland would then go to Ragnar. I don't know that I want all that to happen. Um. Although, well, he's he's heir because he's his brother's heir. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. 
So now that I am a king, I actually have the ability to create a new men-at-arms regiment. I'd very much like to have armored horsemen. Uh, that's something I've been wanting for a while now is heavy cavalry. So we finally got the ability to create a heavy cavalry unit. There we go. And we'll build that up as soon as we can because right now uh, it's just level one, which would be 50 men. Oh boy, and just like that, factions are being created against me, which I expected. Um, Duke William, let's take a look at these factions real quick and see what we're dealing with. Um, none of them have the military power to really challenge me. Oh, now they do, because they're adding members to it. Uh, Countess Catherine of Somerset, the Duke of Cornwall, and Countess Emma of Hampshire. Uh, so let's see what we can do about swaying these people I gained 35 stress for swaying because I'm shy all right no sooner had I started to try and sway him than that faction disbanded and now a new one is taking its place this is the faction to install Duke Roger of Essex on the throne so now we'll try to sway someone differently I guess 35 more stress I guess I gotta not make a habit of that Let's see what's going on here. Oh, we still have Duchess Slane, who used to be the Queen of England. We're going to ransom her. These factions keep disbanding. I could imprison him. It's not going to succeed, so I will not try. What's my council look like? It's still pretty good. I could use with a better mar marshal, though. Uh, Duke Roger of Essex. What proposal is he already considering from me? Oh, it was the uh, it was the ransom that he was considering. So, do I really want to make the former king uh, into a member of my council as a marshal? You know what? Maybe it gets me on his good side, even though I usurped his title. I, I can't switch and try to sway somebody else. That, that's just going to give me too much stress. An alliance. Oh, the Duke of Moray died. Man, they do not have long life expectancies in Moray. He died from internal injuries. So that's my daughter, her husband. Um, so now my grandson is the Duke of Moray at the age of three. <laughs> Fascinating. So we keep seeing these factions forming, reforming, breaking down. None of them seem to last very long. Here's the realm as we currently control it. And obviously we'll, we'll merge Ireland and England together once I die and pass on the throne of England to my son who's king of Ireland. But uh, that's been a short episode, but I feel like that's a great stopping point because pretty significant developments have happened now as I'm now king of England. And obviously a uh, pretty powerful uh, person in my own right uh, on a world stage at this point. But boy, once we get the, the whole empire going, things will really rapidly improve. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We'll be back again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.